Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies this morning. And joining us to review the papers is G.D. Johnson, is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, as always. All right, so we'll be starting with the punch this morning, and the punch leads with Tinubu rallies NSA monarchs as hunger protest looms. The riders here says President meets APC governors Oni, Sultan, clerics as planned protests gains momentum. Another rider says opposition charges Tinubu to address Nigerians. Army DSS alleged plot to force regime change. However, um, aside the fact that the, this is being carried on the punch on other newspapers as well, um, that is their headline. On the Vanguard, it says, protests, no government will condone destructions, or destruction of lives and property. And that is being said that by the president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And um, on the Guardian, it says, planned protests, military warns against violence as DSS reveals plots to cause chaos. So there is a protest <laughs> slated for August 1, um, and the protest is hashtag end bad governance. And so people are already going out and talking about it. It's gaining momentum at the moment. But on the other hand, the government is saying, uh, well, some of the government officials have said they do not know what Nigerians want. Some others have said, oh, because of everything that is going on, the economic hardship, the insecurity, they don't think now is the best time to go out and protest others are still talking about the fact that there are people who are not going to be doing their day's job so of course you're not going to be making money in right however let's talk about how important it is to make our voices heard to these people because if we're deciding to go out into the streets to protest um i don't think anybody who is who has a full belly who has everything going on for them, who have a system that is working, would just want to go out into the street to protest. But with the fact that, um, you know, President Tinubu has said, no destruction of lives and properties, other government officials have said, we don't think you should protest. I would like to get your take on all that is happening right now. The interesting thing is that the government has even highlighted the issues raised. Yeah, exactly. Um, for the protest. And the government, through its action or inaction, has even given more publicity to the issue of the protest or no protest because you could see that from from the executive to to, to the legislature uh, at the state local and federal level and um, they've been running at task Kelta in the last few days um, even engaging traditional rulers and even religious leaders even some organized them um, democratic institution like the national association of nigerian students the nigerian labor congress speaking against the process in the in 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 invariably giving life to the issues that <clears throat> have led to to the call for the protest as far as i'm concerned the beauty of democracy is the majority will have their way minority will have their way. and then um, democracy is is about giving an opportunity for people to express their sitting dissent rather to express their dissent so you must you must be ready to take dissenting views and not destructive actions. So there is a difference between destructive actions, which everybody should find out, but there should be opportunity for people to express their dissenting view, to, to express what and what they feel. And with the way and the government has gone about it, it is more or less like the government is not open to, 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 to dissenting views, it's not ready to tolerate any contrary opinion that does not support the position of the government and you could see that not even from the from the body language of the government even from the actions of the actors and players in government as well as what the government has done with respect to dealing with criticisms to within its own within its own within its own within its own system and within the institution of of of, of governance in nigeria let's take the national assembly for example um you know what happened to ningi um, senator ningi from yeah. Fauci state you know what happened to senator Ndume? Senator Ndume from 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 Bono South. So if you look, if you take all of that into consideration, it will tell you that as far as this government is concerned, they are not ready to tolerate dissent, dissenting view, and I'm not sure they are ready for for for, for any meaningful development because you must 
allow dissenting in democracy majority we have their way minority we have their say that will give you the opportunity to fill the purse of the people it is very very clear that those that are in leadership at the national level at the state level are far away from the reality of an average of an average night. and protest is a fundamental human right as long as it does not infringe on the right of others as long as it does not lead to destruction of properties we saw what happened in the United States of America, for example, okay. uh, when ben Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli president, addressed the Congress, you had people protesting throughout Washington, and then the only the only prevented from 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 destroying from destroying public property and what have you. Not a single arrest was made. Even when they sent the American flag uh, 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 on fire, removed the American flags, and all of that. No, I'm not saying that whatever I want to do in Nigeria should come. I'm not approving such behavior. Yeah. What I'm saying is that democracy allows for dissenting view. You need consenting and dissenting view for you to build society. And it's very clear that the effort that the government has used in addressing this issue of this protest across board, that effort should be directed also to address the issues that has led to the call for the protest. If that the effort that the army, the security agencies have put in place, if they put that effort alone to address the security challenges that we have, I'm sure we will not have the security problems which we have. If they put that, that effort to address the inflation that has eaten deep into every fabric of Nigerian, 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 Nigerians and um, personal economy, family economy, then we won't have this issue of having, they may try to stop the protest. But they can't stop what is the reality of what an average Nigerian is going through with respect to what has led to, to the call for the protest. In actual sense, if you, if you follow conversation and discussion on, on various, on various platforms, media platforms, social media platforms, you see that um, when you are saying that who are those that are responsible, what is the face of this protest, what is the cost? You see they listed hunger, um, cost of living, Mm -hmm. uh, all of that they listed all of those all of those items and if i were the president what i would have done or what i would do is just to do a national address and appeal to all and appeal to everybody that you know what this is not the time for protest if we protest we put we set um the clock of re reviving this economy we set it back and it's time for everybody to put hands on deck Mm -hmm. Give us some time. We can assure you, understand your pain. We understand what is mm -hmm. going on in the country, but we are trying our best, and people will reason. It's interesting you that you're even saying that because even the opposition have said that the president should address the country, and I think that comes from a place of care. That comes from a place of understanding um, that this president or this government cares about its people and the welfare of its people. Because having to just be quiet about it and say no destruction of lives and properties, do you feel like sometimes it, it comes off as, oh, just do whatever you want to do, but make sure you just don't destroy anything. And regardless, I'm still, not, I'm still going to do what I'm going to do. It's, 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 it's very clear. Now they said there will be national protest. The National Assembly quickly rose and went and went on recess. Mm. And went on recess for seven for seven they won't be back until September. I think they went on recess for seven weeks. Yeah. It's it's for me. I, I don't know whether if there's a need for, for us to send well, it's still the same actors and players, so there's not there's nothing left for them to learn. Because I think sometimes I wonder whether we need to send our elected representative to go to school about schools for training, to, for them to understand the art and science of public governance, for them to understand their rules and their responsibility, what should be the way they should conduct themselves and manage the affairs of the nation. Because if it is, if it is a company, for example, can the, the management of a corporate organization decides to go mm. on vacation when there's a looming issue that requires yeah. attention. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the disposition. The, 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 my, my, my usual conclusion is the classic Michael Jackson song. All I want to see, quote, all I want to see is they don't really care about us, unquote. Mm. So it's, 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 they are far away from reality. The reality on ground is that Nigerians are not comfortable and they need answers. And yeah. the answers could be provided when you address them, address mm -hmm. them, talk to them.
they will reason with you, not for you to be using latent and uh, covert threats. You know, I've, I've listened to different threats that has been given. Uh, we will not do this. We will not. Do this. As if we are in a military, we are in a military regime. People have right to protest. I can do a one man protest and go to the state house in Lagos and tell the governor that governor, I'm not satisfied with the state of our road in my community. We can do a state. I can do four, five, six, ten of us can do a protest and go to the state of assembly and protest that we are not satisfied with what is happening with, res with respect to the cost of living in Lagos. What are you members of Lagos State Assembly doing that? That's at the state level. So the right to protest is the right of every citizen. It's the right of every citizen. In democracy, you have the right to dissent. Dissent, not destructive action. Mm. The two should be separated. You have the right to dissent. And if people are, wants to express their dissent, they should be given the opportunity. Now, once you are trying to stifle that, you are just... You are just building momentum for what you may not have control over in the future. So I know that this is supposed to be a um, peaceful protest, and we just hope that it is not being hijacked. But do you think that we're going to get the um, results that this protest is slated to have? Um, for instance, of course, people have cried out for hunger, for insecurity, for um, lack of certain developments in the country. Do you think that with this protest, they would listen to us and do what is right by us? Well, the various institutions that are ready for civil, civil action, whether civil disobedience or civil support, have been infiltrated. Hmm. Look at the Nigerian Labour Congress. Um, look at the Trade Union Congress. Um, look at the National Association of Nigerian Students, NANS. These are these are the live wire of, of, of civil civil action in democratic society. So what has happened to them? You've seen all of these body releasing statements saying that they are not part and parcel of 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 any protest. So what meaningful protest do you want to achieve when the organized um, civil society that should be the voice? of the people in democracy highlighting and advocating for 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 the protection and preservation of the interest of of the masses have have become um um have become have become part and parcel of the established order they become bourgeoisies rather than be fighting for the interest of the working class so what do you want what do you want to achieve you can imagine the, I, I i've said it over time that um we don't have organized we don't have organized uh, civil society in Nigeria again, they are dead. We don't have the National Association of Nigerian Students, it is dead. Uh, we don't have even the Nigerian Labor Congress or the Trade Union Congress, the, the, the NLC, the Labor Union, they are dead. It's very clear because I can say that for a fact. Because why in the 90s, you can't compare the Labor Unions and the student unions and the organized civil society with what happens in the 90s when we are under military administration. Or in the in the 80s or in the 70s, how organized even under military. Hello, sir. Yeah, sorry. Okay. The I'm even. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Please go ahead. You, you be hearing my voice. I don't know what. Um, okay, so you can have all of that compared to what we have now, where. Where everything has become politicized, they become part and parcel of. When they even identify with political parties, when you have labor leaders living, using the labor leadership as a platform for them to seek public offices, that's the challenge which you have. So, as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing meaningful we can achieve with the present crop of um, of, of of organized civil society that we have, and then the, the Nigerian Labor Congress that that we have in Nigeria now. So well, I don't think you can achieve any meaningful thing with respect to that. Even those that are meant to, to listen said they are not interested in listening. And they are just justifying their, their, their views and their position that everything is all right and everything is fine. Well, um, I mean, I just hope that it is as impactful as people want it to be. Um, because the reason why people are even going out in the first place is just to make their voices heard, to amplify um, what they've been talking about, to so hopefully the government listens to that and then they just do what is right by the people. The, gov the, 
the government has amplified it for the people. It's clear. <laughs> Listen, my dear, the government has already... In fact, I don't think there's any need for... For example, how many Publicity. people knew that August 1st was mm. meant for protest until government they started talking about it. This. So, yeah. what, how many people knew what the issues are until the government, through its, through its mm. various agencies and personnel, were aligning? How many people knew about it when traditional rulers become compromised and be talking about 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 Uru or no Uru, we are mm, there. There's also uh, that as well. Well, well let's let's just go that. quickly. We don't have a lot of time. Let's just go quickly to um, other stories. So uh, here on the punch, it says probe National Assembly summons NNPC Dangote over ten billion dollars oil theft. On the Vanguard, it says alleged sabotage. Senate summons petroleum finance ministers, NNPCL, CBN, NPA, and others um so this is about sabotage oil theft there's just a lot going on in the oil and gas sector and dangote has said you know someone or s some set of people a cabal you know has been trying to sabotage his um his refinery and some people have come out to say oh also well, rather rather some government officials have said oh dangote's products are substandard there's just a lot going on and i want to get your take on this the fact that um all these people all these key players right now are being summoned do you think we'll get to that point where um there is some form of dialogue and there's some form of understanding and dangote can go ahead and make sure that his refinery is up and running especially for us in nigeria and of course bringing in revenue because um you you know the Gabonese president is already exploring um, opportunities of him having to start a business there which is the cement business but that's just to tell you that there are other countries as well that might just be looking at him and trying to poach him so how are we ensuring that our own local investor that we have here we're ensuring that um, the business environment is okay for them to thrive do you think the fact that um, the Senate is summoning uh, all of these players would actually lead to that First, let's talk about the need for government to get foreign direct investment in Nigeria. You now said it over time yeah. that what you need to do is to stimulate the economy locally and let Nigerians um, grow the economy. Let you have local investors. That would be an attraction to invite partners from foreign countries to come and partner with them to grow the economy, uh, rather than for the governors and the president to be traveling and jockeying throughout the length and breadth of the world, saying that they are looking for foreign direct investment. You know, that's the mm. simple excuse they give to travel abroad and it's very clear that the way you treat your local investors we send signal globally whether you are ready to to tolerate businesses coming into your economy and it's uh, the issue of the national assembly when the what what has happened to the probe concerning the national assembly you remember uh, the probe concerning national assembly involving Femi Otedola and then um, this particular as of rep member that was the chairman of uh, house committee on on, on finance I can't remember his name now, from Kano State, um, one, um, one, has, one powerful House of Rep member under Abbasanjo and um, yeah, the other administration. I can't recall his name. It was two, two, three times of Rep member. What happened to that particular probe? And if you are a Nigerian and, 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 and you pay attention to, to uh, 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 my salary is fixed, I don't have all the allowances that um, the House of Rep members or the senators or public officers have access to. If you fuel your car until Dangote raised that issue, that's when you begin to question some certain things. It's very clear you buy fuel at 568 at a government control. And I've asked my friend and I've asked them, compare the burning, uh, the, 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 the time frame with which, based on distance, with which this fuel is exhausted, compared with other ones that you bought at 605 or 6010. And then you know that you are just been taking for a ride with the 568. Prices they are, they are selling that the petroleum product as of standard. And when Dangote came out and said it, it validated, it validated my, my observation. Observation is the first scientific methodology that God gave to man. The ability to observe. The ability, nobody teaches a child to put food in his mouth. He observes what happens in his environment, that people don't put food in their noses, they put it in their mouth. So it's very clear that there are people that are making money out of this thing. Because we said, we did not, the government said they removed subsidy. Yet, after a while, they now told us that they are paying subsidy. Yet, we are paying much more than what we are paying a year ago. Then something is really wrong somewhere. 
So yeah. you don't need Dangote, you don't even need the National Assembly should bury their, their heads in sand. They should be very, very ashamed of themselves. Because you don't need Dangote to tell you, because they have an oversight function to look at what is happening in that particular sector. But what do they do? They don't know what they do. As far as their allowances are paid, and yeah. as far as they have access to their salaries and their perks, and as far as they had um, what is attached to the oversight function, they are they are comfortable. They are mm. they are comfortable. All right. So it's quite unfortunate. Um, but I want to get your comments on this final story in just one minute because we have to go. On the Guardian, it leads with development commissions without development. It says region citizens languish amid pro proliferation of political s. PVs, that special purpose vehicles. And so, of course, the N NDDC was created to ensure that they developed the Niger Delta region. But you're seeing lots of, um, you know, roads that are not being met, that are not being developed. You're seeing so many projects that are just left undone. What do you think about this? The fact that there are people, regions that are still not being developed, even though there's, there's been a commission for that purpose. Will create jobs for the boys and create special purpose vehicle to 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 to, to have access to public funds and then mm. you have multilateral agencies dealing with well, what is the essence of all the ministries at the federal level and at the state level? Are we practicing regional government? Is the federal government trying to create another layer between the federal government and the state government by creating this development? Um, agencies in the it's only the southwest and the north central that don't have yet all the four other regions the northwest the northeast the south south and the south east have not gotten that what's the essence what what is the essence of those layer governors what is the essence of it is it not is it not duplication of responsibility yeah. i did not have a new um to 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 to, to siphon um public funds, funds. Is, is it not also an avenue to increase the cost of governance because you are going to create offices, you are going to create personnel, you are going to create all manners of offices for that, and then you are going to you are going to, you are going to buy them official cars, give them allowances, salaries and wages, and then I don't know. I just well, it's quite unfortunate. Um, like you said, there's no development. There's no development to show. You have the NDDC. You take a trip. I just took a trip to. I had to come through the state back to Liberal State, and um, some section of the road were fantastic. But between Ijebu Day and and Shagam, it's horrible and it's terrible, oh. and it's been like that for years. Yeah. It's been like that. It's been like that for years, and you wonder that what's 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 okay. You have two major outlet out of Lagos. One is to go to Lagos by the expressway, or you go to Shagam or the expressway. Okay, so. Now, if those are two major outlets from your major commercial cities, from where you have your largest, largest functional port, where people come to move, and where also you move petroleum products, these are two major roads you move petroleum products across the length and breadth of Nigeria, mm -hmm. and the roads are completely are bad. Well, we we, 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 we really yeah. hope that um, the government, we really hope that the government is doing something because these are part of the issues that people are crying about. We do not have. Um, de good development. We have we lack infrastructure. Good infrastructure in Nigeria. So we hope that all of these commissions, if we need to even cut the cost of governance in these areas, we should start to do that and use the money to actually develop Nigeria. GDA, we you want to say thank you so much. You have to maintain those roads. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper exactly. to maintain the existing roads, make it functional. Yeah. Than create new roads that put a strap body. On, 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 on our revenue. On I agree so, with you. We have to no. go now, sadly. Um, we've run out of time, but we want to say thank you so much for coming and sharing your valuable contributions. It's always a pleasure reviewing the papers with you. Thank you so much. It's, it's, it always makes my day starting my Friday with you. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you. Okay, we've been speaking with GD Johnson. He's a public affairs analyst, and we've just been taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break now, and when we return, we'll be talking about the potential security issues with the planned protests. Please stay with us.